better me. What's up, guys? All right, we about to react to this real quick. Gotta pause it. I'm trying to get it right for y'all. All right, this is the bedroom trader who wiped out a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars. Y'all know how much the trillion dollars is? Imagine you had a trillion dollars. You ain't getting changed. You can, it's hard to get changed. For a trillion dollars. But let's go at you. I wonder if he went to jail or if they locked him up. Because he probably didn't scam him or nothing, but they just got mad and put him in jail. Sometimes you can do stuff so right that you just make the power be mad. And they be trying to lock you up for no reason. Sometimes it just be like that, man. Sometimes it really be like that. That jump be crazy. Like you made the right call and you exploited it. They'd be like, oh, you exploited something. Mama, Chris, let me tell you. I'm still recording. Let me see. Bobby is a young family striving to survive with their four year old son, Lavender Sarao. Feeling the full brunt of poverty, they decide to look for greener pastures. Their plan giving their son the best opportunity to make lots of money at some point. And their search lands them in London, the city of dreams. After landing in London, they quickly realize it's going to take more than just one job to make ends meet. If I learned one thing from my poor private equity buddies in London, it's life here needs a lot of money. On most days, they struggle to put a meal on the table and the house prices are nowhere near affordable. You have to remember that the 80s was when we had a global economic boom and with that, asset prices were shooting through the roof. So to make ends meet, the vendor's mother is forced to work two jobs, one of them as a pharmacy assistant. But even that isn't enough for the young family. They are forced to move to she was like, let him out, let him out. I was like, no. She was like, why? All right, he said he's not surprised. He was surprised. To Hounslow, where they buy a cheaper house next to the Heathrow Airport. This is where Navinder's entire life shall morph from an average citizen to one of the world's greatest traders. Ferraris, no extravagant mansions, just friendly neighbors, children playing in the local park, and cozy cafes where locals gather for a cup of coffee. And amidst that are
our main character. But Nav was just totally, totally unique, really. He was just such an odd and unusual character. He often avoids hanging out with people. He spends most of his time in his bedroom watching football and sometimes burying himself in meaningless chores. But there's one seemingly meaningless activity that will teach him how to make millions playing FIFA. And when they buy a PlayStation, it becomes his only hobby. He locks himself in his bedroom and learns everything about the game. So much so that he becomes one of the top 200 best FIFA players in the world. Similar to how this is one of the top 200 business channels. So you better make sure to subscribe if you want to train your business brain. What Nav does is he observes his opponent's game, checking their tactics and strategies, then does the complete opposite. Exactly how George Soros or Peter Thiel became billionaires. For instance, if a player is playing on the left wing a lot, he attacks on the right wing and puts his best defenders on the left wing. And it's these FIFA skills that will catapult him to the world of trading and make him a legend among men. Similar to how a set of legends will get together in Bali very soon. You wake up in a beautiful Bali villa, go for a workout, get some deep work done and have some stimulating discussions in the evening with people who are as ambitious as you are. In short, you get infinite amounts of work done and you build friendships that will change your life forever. We rented a villa in Bali for two months from end of February until end of April. And I'm inviting some of my friends from finance and media industries to stay with me and us for a couple of weeks. And you can join us too, maybe if spots on the waiting list free up. People will go in and out of the villa. Some will stay for a week and some will stay for a month. On top, we'll do some group activities and mini workshops once or twice a week. Introducing jobs and industries that we work in so that we all learn from each other and build some genuine friendships and empires together. For example, I will talk about how we build YouTube channels and how to get started from scratch and build our first $3,000 per month of income with YouTube. We're not doing this commercially so the price of 450 dollars per week covers the cost of the villa and flights everything else are on you most spots are already taken so if you want to join us please fill out the waiting list form below and we'll get in touch with you to confirm your spot people always complain that nowadays it's difficult to build genuine friendships and a strong network and i really believe this is the one best opportunity to do exactly that so fill out the form below and join the waitlist. And now let's get back to NAV. So yeah, no, I'll just go. He said to make safe side hustle income in the bear market from crypto right I'm now. I'm trying to report so, this is here trying to talk to me. You know you can cut this whole clip out? I, I, no, I can't. Why? In 2001, he joins university to study a degree in computer science, and he lines for the government's cheap student loans to help his parents with upkeep. So Navinda Sarau was, in a lot of ways, quite an ordinary kid from a working-class neighborhood underneath the Heathrow flight path. Had a bit of a, a gob on him, was always very kind of fast and quick-witted, but also a little bit quick to, to kind of anger. He had this gift for, for multiplication and for, for rapid thinking and for arithmetic. While in college, he rents out a room and shares it with a roommate. And thanks to his persistent desire to learn new things, his roommate introduces him to trading, something he will become obsessed with over the next one decade. You see, just like I have slightly psychopathic tendencies, Navinder has been diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder that amplifies his obsessive nature. This allows him to do one task over an extended period of time without stopping. And this ability means only one thing. He can make millions minting the markets. And so he embarks on a journey. He has a quick stint as a telephone salesperson and as a bank admin at Bank of America. See man, I'm trying to get the sauce. Bitch, we can give y'all the sauce. Eh? She hating on me. I'm getting sauce. <laughs> but hold on. Let's go. But he soon realizes that being a normie is not his vision for life. He wants a seat at the table. And his ambition brings him to a job ad. He opens a newspaper and it's the Evening Standard. Uh, and there's an advert in there. Uh, which says, wanted futures traders must work well under pressure. Exactly what he's 
looking for. Yeah, I'm terrible. Okay. So I think that's amazing. And Naf had already started learning trading while still on campus with his student loans. And he lost most of his money. A small price to pay for his gigantic mission. But if he thought working as a trader was going to be a walk in the park, boy, is he wrong. Because no sooner has he applied to the job advert than he finds himself in the hot seat. So Nav was one of the very first people through their door. And it was a bit of an experiment at that point in time. The firm only picks the top 1% of applicants after which they are subjected to a vigorous interview process with three stages. Many of my former colleagues work at hedge funds and it's a very common thing for hedge funds to put their newbie traders through a rigorous application and training program before they can start the job. They pay you hundreds of thousands to go through months of trading and not even everyone gets accepted after the training. But the people who do, they have a bright future at the fund. No applicant is a match. Now, all right. I think I've seen something about him before. Because he found a glitch in the system. This might be the one who had to go against box. Like trading against the box. And he found out the glitch in the box. And he's able to figure out how to manipulate him. Which that one, that dude did end up getting locked up. Because they got mad that he tricked the box. But let's see. For Navinder. And after the interview process, Navinder, together with a bunch of other rookies, joined the firm and begin trading. Yeah, well, we're on New Texas trading floor just outside of London here. You can see there's about two dozen traders here this morning. Most people start at about 7 a.m. Uh, and they carry on right until uh, the market that they're trading in closes. Uh, the firm is located in the outskirts of London. While his parents still think he works at the Bank of America, our boy is busy following his dreams. Every morning, he uses his parents' old Volkswagen car to commute, sometimes stopping by at a nearby McDonald's to chill and wait for his trades to go through. And so after the eight-week intensive probation at the trading firm, he gets a seat at the table. Now he has full access to the markets. No, not the charts. The full raw market, aka the ladder. A ladder is an electronic list of open buy and sell orders for a specific financial asset. It's organized by price levels and updated in real time. Here you can see the orders coming in from buyers and sellers in real time with each trader bidding their price. You can see each individual trade and how they are interacting with each other. You can place your order directly and wait for the other side to react. Yeah, so this will happen. You manipulate the box because he's able to predict what the box will do in certain reactions. But let's get in depth with it. Let's go. To Navinder, this is just another game. Now, Nav had this kind of background in computer games. He was incredibly focused and gifted at games like Halo and FIFA. Um, and, you know, he was able, he found, to sit for hours and hours at a time just focusing on uh, one task until he mastered it. For a person who was top 200 against 3 million players in the FIFA world, this is just another challenge. A challenge he will absolutely crush. After the training and working on probation for a few weeks, where he proves his worth and starts making money, the vendor is given his own workstation. But his Asperger's syndrome does not allow him to be in such an environment. There is too much noise from everyone. And Navinda uh, is almost like a, a, a kind of enigmatic figure at Futex. He has decided that he can't stand the disruption of his colleagues chatting amongst themselves. All right, hold on, guys, real quick. Hold on. Bear with me, man. I got my son, too, man. I got my son, too. 
himself getting very excited with marking moves, so he moves himself to a, a desk completely isolated where he can work on his own. He buys himself a pair of ear defenders. They're not headphones, they're literally ear defenders of the type that road workers use. He enters the office at 2 p.m. sharp on his Lambo and leaves at 9 p.m. trading E-mini S&P futures in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Think of E-mini S&P futures as just derivatives of the S&P 500 index. So all day, every day, he's just sitting behind a screen carefully observing the raw market. I mean, by all accounts, Nav, you know, he didn't immediately take off. But he was good, and he was very patient, and he had what a lot of people don't have, which is amazing focus. Today, we are introducing Ad Creative AI version 5, featuring two revolutionary AI models with unseen outputs that bring high conversion rates. The first, Product Photoshoot AI, transforms your product photos into stunning pro... So you could sit there and watch the ladder without placing a trade patiently for hours and hours at a time and pick his spots. While everyone is following the highest bids, Nav is looking for minor changes in habits. And once he spots a recurring habit, he swooshes into action and quickly places a trade. And in a matter of milliseconds, he makes thousands. This is called scalping and it's what he's good at, but it's equally high risk. See, working at the firm means two things. You make a few very risky trades and make a killing, or you make tiny, numerous trades with low risk but lower returns. Everyone is doing the latter. Nav wants the big fish. This means he has to watch the screen constantly all day, waiting for that one opportunity. And the crazy thing is, he actually found the patterns and things like that. That's what I'm saying. And not only was he able to predict the patterns, well, you see, he was able to manipulate patterns, create the pattern. So like, he'll make it, he'll make a pattern, not necessarily him, but what he did made all the bots react a certain way to create a certain pattern, which is dope. But the bots come in later, go ahead. Remember, he can hyper focus for hours on end. But this means risking huge capital. Luckily, his emotionless way of trading allows him to keep going with big lot sizes, making thousands of profits per day. In no time, he's a legend in the office, revered by both rookies and veterans. Until something happens that drives his profits down, something that he vows to address. It's all a mirage. Uni is the matrix. They trick you into getting into debt and make your life dependent on the job so you never question the matrix. It's depressing, isn't it? I feel like the only way to get out is to get into millionaire status and then I win. I won't have to follow their rules. Nah, fam. Even the money is fake. They print all that money. They want you to chase it. I'll make the matrix bow down to me. Nav has risen through the ranks of Futex to become the undisputable king of scalping. But he begins noticing his profitability in the S&P E-mini is declining. Despite traders being anonymous, they have... So yeah, he started declining. <laughs> you gonna see why. You gonna see why he started making less and less money. And that's when, yup, he made his move. Sometimes you got pay attention to what's going on and then make a move. <laughs> Habits. And when Nav looks closely, he realizes 9 out of 10 orders go unfilled by the same traders. People are bluffing, essentially spoofing the market. The spoofing is an interesting market structure issue. Basically, flood the market with the intention of them, uh, with orders of a certain security, with the intention of them canceling those orders. And what that does is it artificially drives the price of that security up or down, and it puts all the other traders that are working, you know, basically looking to trade that security in a frenzy, and it just creates a very false um, price and demand and output for that security. And these spoof orders are extremely huge, large enough to affect market prices. 
They are being placed automatically on the ladder by bots. And it's not just your typical day trader. It's the big boys. Think Citigroup, Getco and Jump Trading. Well, for Nav, he wasn't so interested in the kind of equality of the markets. Okay, he was more frustrated with his profits and his ability to kind of cool, make money was, was getting uh, squashed by these robots. We have executed 21 million shares already. Wow, and we are not even three minutes in. And the people okay. supposed to police the market are the ones that own yeah. these bots. Nev realizes to yeah, meet no. them, he must join them yeah, and do exactly what they are doing, okay. spoofing yeah, the market. Go to keychain. If you have water, dampness, or a musty smell in your basement, get help now. Don't risk. Do what I got to do? I got work. Watch the baby. Technology has advanced super fast. The world has moved from engine computers to super fast mainframes. But yeah, that's what it was called spoofing. That's the technical term of it. I was trying to remember what the technical term of it, but it's called spoofing. So not only did he cancel the order, but he was able to profit off of it also, the way he was doing stuff. So when they thought something was going, when the box thought it was going one way, he bet the opposite way of the box and end up winning. But let's go. Suddenly, trades are happening at lightning speed. And 9 out of 10 trades are executed by bots. These algorithms have extremely high execution speeds and pattern recognition that makes scalping a joke. And they do this by following the market. If there are more sell orders, the bots cancel the sell orders and vice versa, taking advantage of the slight changes in prices at lightning speed. While this is not good for day traders, certainly not for the point and click traders like Nav. Nav comes up with a genius strategy to take advantage of it. And his computer science degree comes to his rescue. To beat these bots, Nav's plan involves using a self-made algorithm placing large sell orders with no intention of fulfilling them. Then canceling them just before they are hit. Uh, what it would do is uh, it would place large blocks of orders, like you could specify the amount of uh, ticks away from the current best bid. So he would place blocks of orders, usually four, five, and six price points away from the current best bid, and they would sit there, and there would be very large orders, like you know, 600 lots on each price point. Then when the bots notice that there are more sell orders on the sell side, they execute their sell orders and move to the buy side. The vendor makes a killing this way. He constantly puts these large orders in the letter and just before they're executed, he cancels them. But there's one little problem. He must place genuine orders using the firm's capital and wait for market action. If he's too slow and his spoof orders get executed, he risks losing millions. See, Nav's carefree demeanor means he's not easily swayed by emotion. He even makes trades with volumes as large as 5,000 lots while talking. Money to him is nothing but a game score in a matrix. It's like hitting and maintaining the highest score, just like FIFA, until someone notices his mischief. As now, yeah, spoofing is against the law, guys. Just to let you know, spoofing is against the law. The visitor's account grows, so does the firm's profits. Initially, rookies share their profits with the firm 50-50, but the visitor is making tens of thousands of dollars per day, secretly spoofing the market. Because of his skills, Nav is promoted to senior trader, gets an increased risk limit and leverage, but his profit-sharing ratio is reduced from 50-50 to 10-90. Why? Because even one very large leverage trade can wipe down the entire firm, and the firm needs to take that risk. Nav thinks that's bullshit. They just want his money, his high score. He throws tantrums at the boss every day. It's a toxic relationship that none of them wants to quit because they are both benefiting. The firm is getting huge commissions and profits.
profits and the vendor is getting access to the raw markets and equally more capital. But when he receives a call from authorities with a spoofing warning, Nav immediately assumes it's his bosses. Famously, at one point in time, he gets a letter from from uh, the exchange asking him to essentially explain what he's been up to, and he tells them to kiss my ass. In 2008, five years later, Navinder quits the firm with... So he got a warning already for it. So usually what they do is just come down and arrest you. So that's like scamming. That's a form of scamming on the um, stock, stock change in the market. So he got let off one hour to stop. Took my money, bounce. Three million dollars in the bank. Now his next phase will turn him into a legend among traders. Now, free to pursue his mission, he begins concentrating on his wins. He has set up a company in the Caribbean island of Nevis and named it conveniently Nav Sarau Milking Markets. His work, milking the markets. His office, his Hounslow bedroom. But while he's doing so, his accountant is planning something sinister behind his back. At some point, his accountant notices that he's making millions and millions of dollars uh, and says, hey, Nav, you know, you should meet some of my friends. They can help you invest your money. John Dupont, a director at the London arm of an Isle of Man-based financial advisory firm called Montpellier Tax Consultants, is the guy to manage his money. Dupont tells him that as it is, the banks will only give him 0.5% return on his money. But if he invests with them, they could make more than 30%. Of course, he agrees and channels all his proceeds to this Dupont guy. He receives interests amounting to hundreds of thousands as promised. But what he doesn't know is Dupont is secretly squandering his money. And when Nav gets arrested, he will fail to raise bail because Dupont will be nowhere to be found. But before that, Nav is about to make a huge killing. The biggest win in his entire trading history. And that's what happened in the, that world, that scamming world. Sometimes the fleecer get fleeced in the middle of fleecing. Because somebody else get hip to what you're doing. You get hip to the game because you've been doing so long. And they come right in. That's lie and figure out how to get the money from you. And that's crazy. So now you in jail and they all spending your money that you stole. We're down by between three and four and a half percent generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. Lehman Brothers is going bankrupt. It's JP Morgan Chase to the rescue, just as investment banker rival Bear Stearns seemed headed for bankruptcy. It feels like the end of the world. Banks are collapsing, stocks are falling are homeless. The only constant are the outbursts by Jim Cramer. My people have been in this game for 25 years and they are losing their jobs and these firms are going to go out of business and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. While everyone is panicking, the vendor is plotting his next move. And on Thursday, November 28th, the S&P plunges to the lowest level in a decade. Having rented a desk at a trading firm, CFT, Navinder realizes that a tsunami is coming. If the government bails out these banks, the S&P will rise exponentially and bounce back. Or will it? This is the biggest risk he has ever taken. But if he's right, his account balance will increase by tens of millions and the following day Nav places his orders and bets big this bill commits up you know, to one billion taxpayer dollars a large amount of money is necessary to have an impact and on our financial system up, but you wasn't after the government like announces the bailout program the next week so the markets Rally hard. Your bet. And what does our boy do? He places even. Like you wish you knew it was going down, so you could place your bets a certain way, so then you could make money off of it. But you ain't got nothing to do with it. It just somehow you figured it out. Like this is going down like this. Like when you get good at the game, you can see certain things happening in the market and any game. You can see and predict certain things, certain moves happening. So if you kept seeing a certain action happen, like, so
somebody made a big bet. No, a big sell order. And then they canceled the order. And then you see that repeatedly happening. And then you can read it. So when they make a big sell order. And then they cancel it. You could put your move in the way you got to put your move in. And just follow them around the market. Oh, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. The only thing is. You can't really predict it because certain orders, they really are going through it. And certain sell orders, they're not going through it. But if you could follow them and mimic their movement, you know how much money you would make. And you ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Like, I don't know them. Even if the authorities came to you, like, I don't know them. I'll just play some bets. I just trading. That's all. I seen certain people make moves. They they said he won the best in the game, so I was just make making moves that he was making. You get what I'm saying? What? He was winning, so I I decided to win with him. You know, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. I don't know nothing about none of that. That type of move. More orders, pumping more money into his trades. By the end of the next two weeks, the prices rise nine. Doing this was better than buying Bitcoin at a penny. If you knew I do this, this would have been better than buying Bitcoin at a penny. Dead serious. In percent, Naf's account grows from two million to eleven million in just two weeks. Most people would retire and go spend their money or do other things, but most are not the target demographic of this channel and Navinder too is a real megalomaniac and his net worth is about to explode after 17 years of making money in the markets with the squeeze and testing and refining it i want to introduce you to the squeeze pro it's designed to offer objective now you about to get into some truth right here right they about to reveal us the truth and the secret Remember when I told you it's already trillionaires out there? They just don't really get talked about like that. They talking about um Elon could be the world's first trillionaire. It's already trillionaires out there. You just don't hear about them like that. That's serious. But you bought them right now. NAF comes out of the 2008 financial crisis unscathed, but the system has reorganized itself and has something else in store for him. By 2009, quants and bots dominate the market. Almost every trade is being done by an algo in one way or another. They are basically scalping on a large scale, leaving day traders like NAF biting the dust. While Futurex and other trading companies employ humans, the big firms like Getco and Jump Trading employ coders and quants making human traders obsolete to nav these bots are just tools used by the wealthy and faceless billionaires and he's here to take them down but if he's to compete with these bots he has to become one himself how enter antonio hadrook now this is why i always say ai already exists and we've been dealing with ai and working with ai for long in my industries that's sec that's like second nature AI. They be able to write programs or hire somebody to write programs to do stuff for you. That that was already going on. You get what I'm saying? What y'all looking for is um Androids. And technically we got Androids, but y'all looking for the Androids with the human body. Your phone is literally an Android. They just ain't unleash all this full capabilities on you yet. Not unlock it for you, but unleash it on you. No. <laughs> Let me stop. Go ahead. Yalis, a software engineer. In 2009, 2010, he makes this kind of fateful decision that he's going to build his own robot that's going to fight back against the HFT firms. And what he's planning to do is to essentially manipulate the market. He partners up with Antonio to build a trading software that can outsmart the algos. The goal is simple. If he can't make his own robots, he will disrupt theirs. And he will do so by altering the market enough that it disrupts their algos function. You see the 
algos are not like humans. They don't think. They just follow the market blindly. So if NAV could design a software that can flood the market with spoof orders large enough to sway the market, and then it automatically cancels them, he could beat them in their own game. So together with Antonio, they begin writing the code. The functionality that he sort of uh, designed and got someone else to create for him was such that every time the price moved, higher or lower, the this sort of block of sell orders would move in lockstep. So they would never get any closer to the current price and would therefore never be hit. And what that did, in a quite a rudimentary way, is just add huge amounts of selling pressure you know, to, to the market. Here's how it works. It creates a large amount of limit orders on either the buy or the sell side. Traders and algos notice this influx of orders. Prices move up or down due to this massive order changing supply and demand. Then swiftly, he would buy or sell based on this information, taking advantage of the minute price differences. And just before the trade is executed, it's automatically cancelled and the algos are left biting the dust. This is similar to insider trading as he already knows the moves that will happen next in the markets. The strategy works. Our board... You see, yeah, he actually made the market react a certain way. He literally made it do it. So that means that you could... That's like having a print and press. You can make money anytime you're ready because you just make this market act a certain way and then you just get your money. That's crazy that's dope and you using a bot so it's happening in seconds so let's say i want a couple mil i just go online work with my bot just put it in my bot and then it does it just turn my bot on not even put it in with my bot just put turn my bot on it do it in a second and i got millions of dollars and i go spend it that's crazy yo it goes from making a thousand dollars a day sometimes half a million per day. And who do you think is suffering the most from the losses? The big trading firms whose bots are left scattered around, basically getting a taste of their own medicine. In that one year alone, NAV's account grows from 11 million to more than 40 million dollars. And all this while, no one, even his own parents, have an idea that he is a multi-millionaire until... unpredictable election for a generation over the next few hours we'll discover what's happened welcome to election night here on the bbc the financial markets are already volatile the country has just come out of a financial crisis greece has defaulted on its debt the eu is planning a bailout but today is just another day for nav after having a bowl of cereal and playing fifa for most of the morning in his bedroom he gets up and takes up his laptop he's going to do his daily trades only this time something big will happen at 3 20 p.m he activates the cancel if close option and places 2100 contracts worth 120 million dollars in six oh minutes God, these God. orders are automatically closed and reopened 604 times two hours a lot of times clips don't be eating after he cooked a big meal and stuff like that. This is why. They're just sitting there eating and tasting everything. First later, he places another six sell orders worth $200 million. This time, he activates his auto trader for 10 minutes. But then... Dinner's ready, honey! Uh, big U.S. 
pension fund had placed a massive, massive um, non-price sensitive sell order into the market in an already extremely volatile day. Um, and that was exactly at the point at which the market began to fall. Ideally, such a trade should take a few hours, but the firm allows the algos to dump their futures without caring about time or price. So it starts selling contracts as fast as possible to whatever price is out there in the market. All algos in the market follow the trend and begin executing sell orders to avoid losses. Remember Navinder's trading algo is still running in his bedroom and Navinder is peacefully having dinner. But his algo is unique, not like the big firm's HFT. It's basically adding more pressure for the price to go down by creating even bigger fake sell orders that keep staying below the highest price. So in essence, misleading Citadel and jump trading algos to pump even more sell orders. A middle figure to them in essence. And since Nav's algo knows that the market will recover, they begin placing genuine buy orders which are executed. And as the market rises, so do Nav's profits. For 30 minutes, the prices keep going down until more than $1 trillion are wiped off the market. But at exactly 2.45 p.m. EDT, everything stops. <laughs> the Chicago Mercantile Exchange's stop logic functional that's crazy. That's crazy. He made a trillion dollars in 30 minutes. That's crazy. But he got caught because he let it go on for too long. He, he stepped away and he, and he asked him to let it go on for too long. That's crazy. He has been activated. What this does is when everything starts going nuts, they force trading to stop for a minute so that everybody can have a juice box and think about what they've done. And after <laughs> five minutes, the prices begin to climb. Everyone has realized it was all a hoax, that nothing catastrophic had happened in the market. They begin buying back their positions and the market regains all the $1 trillion lost. In those 36 minutes, the vendor makes upwards of $800,000. And no one, not even the SEC, can explain what just happened. It was all surreal and unexpected until the SEC goes on a hunting spree for its next scapegoat. For five years now, Navinder has been milking the markets the same way, but he's managed to stay under the radar. He still lives in his parents' house bedroom, still goes to the nearby McDonald's to chill, still rides his moped, and he's still making millions of dollars trading in his bedroom with his auto trader algorithm. All the money he earns goes to his accountant's offshore accounts for investments. All $5 million earned in his entire trading career. Unbeknownst to him, something terrible is brewing. The SEC has come up with all excuses they could find for the 2010 flash crash, but the public is not buying it. They are running out of time. They need a scapegoat, someone they could pin the fall on, and their prayers are answered by another trader who alerts them of spoofing orders in the CME. When these orders are traced, a pattern is revealed that goes all the way to the 2010 flash crash. And guess the owner of the spoof orders, our boy, Navinder Sarau. I took my money on bounce. That's it. Slowly pull back from my vendor. Outer. The row, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. The man accused of single-handedly triggering a massive 2010 stock plunge is appearing in a London courtroom this morning. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 600 points in five minutes in what was called a flash crash. The United States is seeking his extradition.
What's crazy is the U.S. went to his country and got him. Oh, you you gonna take money like that? You gonna you you, you gonna play us like that? All right, we got you. Even though they playing everybody, right? Everybody in the market using bots and playing each other, but they're going to come all the way there to get him. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because he played these bots. Everybody playing with block bots, but he played they bots. They swear they got the best bot. I got the best bots money could buy, and he got played. And now... They come to get him. That's crazy, son. That's crazy. That's mad crazy, though. Can you get off my... Get off the plate. No, 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 no. That's not how you do that. Okay? You get back. Don't look at how to do it right now anyway. I'll teach you later. Four-year-olds get in there. Everything, man. Four-year-olds... You think it's the twos and threes? No, them four-year-olds. Go lay down, baby. Go lay down. Hurry up. You don't got the bags on off this thing. Go lay down. You need to change. But anyway, man. TJ Smooth with another one. Hold on. Well, we got a little bit of time left. We got a couple minutes. Let's watch it. Leave it, leave the mic alone. Let's be it. You're like how I do this. This is her plate, wife plate. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it, guys. Can you just move with another one. I'll holla at you, mid. Peace out, world family.